this that is mu. We went to our discussion of Baki Gemara. These two chapter, this chapter hey is extremely uh, vital. It's talking about sources of uh, halachas, and he breaks up sources of halachas in two parts. Something he calls uh, svara, and something that he calls pasuk. And this is let you do a, a quick review because. You really should see this is whole one whole unit here. He says the 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 learning of dinim is comes from in two drachim. There's two ways. One is mitzad svara, which he says rotzelama ki has seichel goes elios chain. There's something that the seichels must have. All this logical stuff that we're doing uh, in higayon is to sharpen our seichel so that we know that we're using seichel properly. But anything that the human reason uh, can produce is one source of um, producing Dine Taro. And the other one is Gezer Sekasev. When the Pasek says it in black and white, what does it mean? He's going to discuss the second one first. What does it mean the Pasek says it? So he says that it means that it's written there as a complete Kasev, uh, in, in words, clear words. Uh, or it's there as a remnant. Either the Kesher, Smichus, or Yitavashim. What does Kesher mean? Kesher means that there's a Gezer Shabbat, a Hekish between two things. Smichus means one thing is next to the other, or there's extra words. So. But what it is, what it does mean is that either the Torah is mechadesh, the, the din, or we're using our minds to mechadesh the din. Now he's going to explain that out. Now he says when you need a kasev, the, the general rule we spoke about last week is svar lamali kura. A pasuk only comes when your mind, your 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 reason would uh, come to a different conclusion that the Torah wants you to come to. And that's the first rule. That the, 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 he says, Akasev lo bo adin ela hu ba'abo shimitzad asvor mi b'chutz hainu amrim b'hefech. That's his first rule. His first rule is that you need the Torah to write something down when you would have thought the opposite. And he proves it because he says if you wanted to say the same thing, so it's just mutar, wish to call me nay. So here's my little gray chart. Okay. Or by the way, he adds the Shoshis Raminos. Okay. So uh, you need a Pasuk to tell you not X, for instance, when you would have thought X either be because of your seichel, a simple story of Bichutz, or because of one of the Shoshis Raminos. So if you would have come to a Mukha conclusion, then, as far, then the, the, the Pasuk has to now say against that, okay? So if you would have logically come to X or to the Shoshay Midos, you would have come to X. And now the only way you can know not X is if the Torah comes and writes it. So that's the rule one. The, 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 the basic rule is that the Torah comes to Mahapech to say the opposite of what you would have thought, either through logic or through the Shlosh Reminos. Now, he says this rule of opposite, of course, uh, uh, only works when the Svar Bichutz is Muhrach. But if you have two, if a Svar Bichutz had two possibilities, you could have logically said X or not X, so then the Torah can come and repeat X. So it's, it's really nostalgic and esophic. Since you swear as it would have been X or not X, so I have to repeat X because X was not the only possibility. Okay, so that's the second scenario. Now, what happens in the third scenario if the Svarim Bechus is Mokrach and the Torah does do what we said it shouldn't do, it repeats itself. So there we say it always comes Lamamayet. Okay, and it says only here and not everywhere, and only here and whenever you want to say this din anywhere else, you're going to have to have 
uh, another morphoarish uh, Tussock Sanct. Okay. So that's right. Now, in Dalit, he explained to us how do we know that Pesukim are limited or they're supposed to be broad. How do we know to extend the din throughout the whole Torah or to limit it to a case? So he explains that that the the first rule when we say we did strictly goli hacha, hachi goli goli hacha the low goli low goli, where it's a very limited case, is is where the Torah decides to say the din in the smallest finish. Okay, so if an Eser exists in a Kohen, so which is the smallest Kiddush, because that's the place you'd most likely think the Eser should exist, so then you wouldn't extend it down to a Levi or Yisrael. Okay, so if it's in a Miut Kiddush case, so that means it's only there and nowhere, and it doesn't extend. Or, as he said before, if the Torah repeats what you would have thought, so then also comes to Mamayat. Okay, like like If you have two Pesukim saying the same thing, so from then on you cannot extend. So those are the two rules of mute. What's the rule of extent? Of the call Kula. So When just the opposite, when the Torah is Megala itself in the greatest Kiddush, let's say there's an Isa in Israel, so that would be the greatest Kiddush. So then certainly you can look at chain and say that it, that same Isa exists in a Levi or a Kohen. And he gives us one rule, he says, when it comes to Kaso, so then there's no logic, but you cannot move it. Okay, so that was his exposition on things which are written in the Torah, either explicitly or through uh, Ramazan. Now he's going to talk about how you use your mind to extend dinner. So he says like this. This is what we're up to today. Lamedis hadin bahali fusos minose minose bederech svara he beechad mishnei drachim. There's two ways to extend a, 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 a din from one case to another case. Two ways. It's either going to be the mamatzim or the kalbchol. Okay. Let's see what he says. Omi mishnah la mishnah. Wrote Salomar. Shnei no seem shavin. Oshnehem Hamurim, Oshnehem Kalim. When you have two subjects that are equal or equally Chumra, uh, Machmir, or equally Kal, so then, Minatina said, Din, Be'echad Mehen, by putting the Din in one of them, then Yigzo Hasvarashi Ten Gamasheni. Intellect, your reason uh, dictates that the din has to apply to the second case. So the two cases are equal or equally strict or equally cal. So then when you see a din in one case, then in Svara you will extend it to another case. This is called a ma mitzino. But we see over here we're allowed to extend over to the next case because they are equivalent cases. A variation on that is the Kalva Homer or the Homer Mikal. What does that mean? Their things are not going to be equivalent. They're going to actually have a relationship that one is going to be more strict than the other or more lenient than the other. What does that mean? Mi Homer Shinimsa Benose Hakal. If there's a Homer that we find in a Nose which is Kal, let's say that uh, Israel can't marry a Mamzeris. So there, nilmat ose no say, uh, uh, excuse me, nilmat also le no say So then we can extend 
that then in logic to a subject which is more strict, like the Levi or the Yisrael. So that's the Kalvachomer. O minose chamor sheyesh lo kula. Yesh, say there's a, 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 a kula that we find in a uh, in a koan. So then, milmad ose lenose hakal mikol shikain. So certainly, a Yisrael will have that kula. Okay. Bezuhi derech kal lechomer. So that's the second method. So the first method, which we discussed in Derek Trunos, and now it's coming up here, the first me method of Svara is to go from equal cases to cases which are equal, will have the same Nasu, or two cases which are represent Kal uh, Rechomer. So what the, if there's a, if there's a, uh, strictness in the Choma case is going to exist in, it's not going to exist in the Kal case. If there's a cool in the Choma case, then it definitely will exist in the Kal case. And going the other way around, if the Kal case has a uh, Chumra, so then the Choma case, like the Choma definitely will have it, but if the Kal case has a cooler, so then we should don't know really if it exists in that. It, it shouldn't exist in the uh, in the Homer case, or else it shouldn't be brought there. So those are the two methods of learning misvara through comparison and through greater and lesser. Now he says there's a third way that we learn through svara. The yesh derech gimel. It's doma lemametzino. It's like the mametzino, but he derech hekesha. It's called a hekish. Kamo shamru. Makish eved la'ama ivriya. So I brought the Gemara. The Gemara wants to know how can you... Uh, the Gemara establishes that we can acquire a ama ivriya with money. Okay, it says, Ashkacha ama ivriya, it brings a proof. Hoel, u. Mikadesha bekesev, not bekesev. Since she can be married with money, so okay, she could be sold with money. But what about the evidivri menalon? So it says omakro kiyim kolacha achicha haivri o habria. The pasuk says when your brother is sold as an evid or a male slave, when, when, when male, your brother is sold as a male slave or a female slave and works six years. So there, since the two subjects are found together in the same pusik, so we're makish the din from one to the other. Makish the din man, since we know that the uh, uh, the amivriya can be uh, uh, acquired with Kesif, so we can then apply that to the evidence tree. Makish of how do we know uh, that a woman can be married with a star? was the question over there. The graves, I just stated in the rest of the Chazal, because it says Yotze Vahai, so what did that mean? The Gemara says, Ummanayan Sha'af Bishtar, how do you know a woman can be acquired even with a star, not only with Kesim? Omakro the Yotza Vahai, so she shall, don't know, she gets the book, she'll go out this man and she will come into another man. There is Makish Havaya Yitzia. Since Yitzia and Havaya are together, so we put the two concepts together. My Yitzia Bishtar, Af Havaya Nami Bishtar. So this is not, that's why it's this number Gimel, he's going to explain one second why the different, I think I'll let him explain and then we'll go back over it. Now what's the difference between Vahafresh Benayim, Ki Bamametzinu Hu Misvara Kamo Kal Vachomer. The Mametzinu and the Kal Vachomer are logical, uh, reasonable, 
extensions from one case to the next, either through equivalent or kalvachom or kalvachom. But the hekesh whom we call hakasev, continues Eretz Yisrael. Really, the hekesh comes, gets its strength, not because it's logic. There's no logical reason why the way a woman goes out, which are, is the way she should come in. There's no logic that says the two things should be equal. Just the pusik puts it together. Lekain a hekesh called Godel Yotemi Mamitsino. He actually says the hekesh is stronger, a stronger method of learning dinim than a Mamitsino. Why? Ki a kalvachoma u Mamitsino bavor hi osamiko of svara yechlehem pircha. Since the basis of the Mamitsino and the kalvachoma is a logical basis, you're taking a factor in both cases and saying that they're equal or greater than. So he says, Svara, just like you made a similarity between the two cases, you can also make a difference in Svara. You can Yeshlam Pircha. But when it comes to the Hekish, the Hekish is a Bizer Sakasim. Mitzani Yosem Bikoha Kosov, since it comes from the Torah putting it together, Ain Lahashi Kenegdo. So then you can't have you can't ask kashas because the pasuk put together. Because they ask the kashas of who. So that's very interesting. There's um, pure uh, reason uh, saying two cases are similar, therefore they should have the same din or kalvachomer. And then there's a hekish, which is really things that are put together not because of logic, but because the Torah put them together and that's for that's why we move it in from one to the next. So I guess this is where the um safer Higayan comes in is knowing where you can compare things, where you can't, what's similar, what's not, and understanding the attributes and the aspects of of of, of anything. Right. So you could either and that's very, very, very tricky business. It's a very tricky business. Because everything, as he says, and, and, and that's his whole idea, really, in, 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 in Dr. Martin's Epidayon, is because things have a lot of attributes, and you have to know what is the, the, the critical aspect. So the we say the difference that makes the difference, or the, 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 the attribute that makes the difference. Okay? And that's a tricky business. And that's why in Svara, we say, okay, these things. As a matter of fact, a, a famous, a famous Umara, in 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 uh, Babakama, you see, it's all about that. Which attribute? On what? Why would you have moved from shore to to Mabo, Mabo the shore, you see? And why wouldn't you? What aspects? Are, what aspects are are uh, similar, and what aspects are not similar? And that really, when we deeply get involved in that mission, that's what that mission is talking about. Because it seems that they have a common quality, and yet, if they have a common quality, then I just have to write one. And from the common quality of dark and lahazi kishmir samalef, let's say, the dark and dark and lahazi kishmir samalef, that common quality. So I just have to write one, and I could learn all the other ones from it. So then, the problem is, why did Torah have to say repeat itself four times? So then we have to make distinctions. We have to say it's not mukhrah to go from one to the other. Because logically, you could have had two possibilities. You could have said that you true, the lower common denominator of Dr. Mahazik is the reason why the Torah picked Shor, for instance. Or maybe it was the higher common denominator of Karen. And therefore, I couldn't learn the other ones out because the other ones don't have Kavan al -Hazik. So because I have the two possibilities, uh, uh, to learn from the low common name or the higher common, the, the higher, the unique aspects, and then I have to write the 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 other four, the other three pesukim. Okay, so this is exactly where we need Higayel, but it's it's a tricky business to understand what aspect is called the critical aspect. That does it. Okay, and a lot of times we need help. You know. With this short, to know that Karen's Kavan Lahazik is, uh, is something you may have thought thought about logically. I mean, you should have think think about it, but it's not so easy to describe. So it's also not, yeah, it's not well, it's not also not so obvious. It's quite a lot, and it's not obvious. That's correct.
Well, we know the Torah says you know, when, a, when an animal gores another animal, you have to pay. But the, you're right. What was the quality in the goring that did it? Maybe it's maybe the poking is what does it. Why do you say kavana? It's true that that's one of the attributes of it. But here we go. We're studying Higayon. Is it? Is it an atzmiat? Bilti shalom, the shalom, yucha. Exactly. So that becomes the the tricky nature. And we live on on extending them, so it's uh, it's critical. And we live here, and not everything is exeris you know. The, the Torah expects, understands that it's talking to reasonable people that should be able to extend the name from one place to the next. So, I'm just saying, it's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very uh, tricky business, and has to be done very subtly. And the Gemara itself argues many times. Um, about that quality, what the quality is, and can it be extended, and what the differences are, and are they critical differences? And we see it many, many times. Okay, so that's what he says uh, at this point. He says, when you're learning from Svar, it means you're using your ability to compare things and saying that things are equivalent or Kalbachomers, so then we should move them. And then he says, sometimes the Torah itself, through the Zeres Akasav, makes things equivalent. Not because they're logical, but because it wants to put two things together. Okay, so he says that that has a stronger force than the logical things, because logical things, just as you found a quality that is common, you may find a quality that's uncommon. But if it's a, if it's a heckish that's made through a Pusik, so then it's very, very powerful, because says we're not talking about uh, simple uh, common sense or logic. We're talking about a, uh, a din that the Torah put together through the relationship of the two pasukim. Okay. So he says here, I'm not a heifer. What's the difference between now a kalvachoma and a mamatzina? So we see the difference between the Hekish and the Mamatsina because one is like has it's stronger because the Torah puts it together. It means it doesn't matter what your logic thinks, that the Torah made it equivalent. But what's the difference between a Kalvachoma and a Mamatsina, he says? So he says, Kila Mamatsinu Pirchinan Kovu. When you make a Mamatsinu, so you can destroy that comparison with any uh, difference. Well, it has to be significant, but a small difference. But a kalvachomar tzarech lihiyos pirchoso atzmis v'chazaka. But a kalvachomar has to be destroyed with an etzim and powerful, uh, an essential and powerful uh, difference. Okay, and we can understand why, because a kalvachomar is a mamatzinu plus. It's saying that two things are grand, are not only equal to each other, but one has relationship, but one is more kalvachomar than the other. So if I want to destroy it, so it has to be, since they're already equivalent, like uh, the, the, the Israel, Levi, and the Kohen all, all have a very common, common factor of being Jewish people. So if I'm going to destroy a kalvachomar, uh, between them, I'm going to have to uh, do something that's very, very, uh, very, very powerful. Now, how this works out, logic. I mean, in, in the Gemara's, you, you have to see as as it as it plays out. I would love to be able to give you examples of of call the who's and not. I mean, we do have the Gemara of, of the Zikin, but uh, to define specifically, that would be a little. We have to do that too, that's in Hashem. Okay, he says like this. Ulechem, keshenim sashnei nosei. Now, if that's true, that you can create a dinin through comparison of two subjects, so two cases that produce, the equivalent case producing the same law, he says, Ulechem, so now, when you find two subjects, or two cases, let's say two subjects, that are equivalent, and you know a din in one of them. 
ומביא אוסו התנא במשנה סו, לתת אליהם תור אחס ומשפט אחס. So you see two, two, two cases that are equivalent, and they're brought in the Mishnah and given the same law. Le, uh, I think Lehena, okay. Yiksha ha-Talmud l'snei chada o teisei chada mi chada. So the Gemara will always say l'snei chada, learn one or learn from the one to the other. So for instance, here's our classic case in Nezikin. Since the Havamina is that, that shore is like Mava, so the hidden question there was L'snei Chada. If already I know shore is Chayev, the pay Nezikin, so in the water I have to learn Mava, L'snei Chada. Because the rules of the equivalence should mean that if one case is given and another case is equivalent to that case, it should have the same rule. Ki Achar Shehem Shave, since they're equal, the shore and the Mava, there's no Kiddush of one over the other one. So why does the Tana uh, bring both cases? Sure, and Mabo, in this case the Torah. Let's just write one and I'll be able to derive the other one. We're not talking about people who are salesmen that go around selling their wares that show you 15 different knives, even though there's no significant difference between one and the other one. The yeshivu. So at that point, the, <coughs> the Gemara, whatever is doing the discussion, will say, al kiyotze b'zeh tzricha, diyash me'inan. So then, the answer, of course, is <coughs> that we have to show a tzrichusa. Right? If you would have learned, sure, I wouldn't have learned now. And if I would have learned Mav, I wouldn't have learned Shor, because uh, I would have said that it's the unique quality that's causing the din and not the LCD. The im ha shnei nosin ain't o shavin, aval hem kalvachomer. If they're not mamitzina type things, they're not equal to each other, but they resemble a kalvachomer, yiksha, taste of a kalvachomer. So the, the Gemara, whoever's doing the investigation, will say they learn it with Kalvachomer. If I have boar already, and, and which is inanimate, doesn't go out to do damage, not alive, and it's Chayev, so Kalvachomer, you know, the other ones, that's something that the Gemara asked. The Mishnah just went down the tree from chain uh, from uh, Shor and Mava down to Asia and down to Boar. But the Gemara says, why don't we go up the chain and say, look, if the Torah already writes Boar, uh, so why does the keep the culture came the other ones? Okay, and it adds Boar with one other one, because it has to eliminate certain qualities. Okay. Okay, so that's basically, we, we discovered that when things are Two similar cases should have the same din, and we can learn one to the other, but if they're both presented, then it's a kasha, because really we don't want any representation, whether it's in Chumash or in the mission. So now he says, look for me, me mose, she yikshu v'im isay l'snei hai. If the Tan already brought this case, let him learn another case. Okay, so that seems against our rule. I mean, well, why do you have to? You think he's karuchla? He's like a, a salesman. He has to show you 15 different knives. So that looks a little, apparently that it's a, a little bit of a steer to what we're saying. What's the mama? The im emes hu shiyeshlo shiilu hashnei the boy mishpat echad lehem. If the truth is that these two subjects have the same mishpat, the same law, hayel alomar gam ken ze kamo echad. He should have said the second one like the first. Okay, so the Gemara says, wait a minute. If the, the Tan only talked about case A, now you want to tell me that case B also has the same law as case A. So the Gemara says, wait a minute. In listening, listening high, if that's true that case B has the same law as case A, then he should have writ wrote it. Okay. He's going to explain himself. Looks like why does he have to 
write it if you derive it. But sometimes someone says, wait a minute, if you already taught, if it's true that case B is high, let me teach you. Okay, then these two cases were really the same, A and B, so he should have taught it. it. Must mean that B doesn't have that there. And the gray is from another gear, so we'll read it. Now this looks like against the rule of being a salesman, because you're telling me if he brought this case, then he should have brought this other case too. About Yeshua Double Who tells us an important principle. Kikashi Eshkadish Yoter, Ki Baose Halashin Shalo Eviu. If there's a great Hiddish in the case that was left out, then they ask, Yikshiv in Isil Snehai. Then they say, if they brought case A, then they should have brought case B, because case B was a great Hiddish. So it's not that just case A is equal to case B. If case A is equal to case B, they shouldn't be case B because you would learn case B because it's equivalent to case A. But if case B is a greater Kiddush, then they say, in this say it's true that it's fine. So why, why did Tana bring the bigger Kiddush? Why did he only bring the smaller Kiddush? It's missing. Now, but if the two cases equal, you don't say, well, if the Tana already brought this one, let him brought this equally equal case. There is the case of Lokaruch. If two cases are equal, A is equal to B, so he shouldn't bring B if B is really equal to A. That you should figure out logically. But if B is greater than A, a greater Kiddush than A, a greater surprise than A, so then he should bring B because B is a greater Kiddush. Now sometimes Yiksha Zegam Bishinui Kiatana Yorid. Now sometimes the Gemara will uh, accept uh, um, the fact that a case is left out, and it says like this: Kiatana Yorid Limnos Kol Hanosim Shiyesh Lahem Also Din. When the Tana is going to spell out all the cases. That, is, that have a certain din. If he lists all the cases, so they say, I'm bringing whole the nachas tana in minyana. Listen, that should be yeah. Listen, that's a, a typo. Listen, nama hi. Not listen. Okay. Since the tana is bringing all the cases, then it should also bring this one. The yeshiva lo tana v'shayr. So in that scenario, the Gemara will say tana v'shayr and say high shire to high shire. If the tana does bring, for uh, whatever reason he does, all the cases in a certain day, like all the possible chilukim that you can have in a din. So then if he leaves something out, you say, why did he leave it out? So the Gemara will say, Tana Bishire. he left something out. But the Gemara always says, High Shire, the, the High Shire. I mean, in other words, the Tana never leaves out just one case. When he brings a list, he'll always leave out a, a minute of two. Okay, and this is the other uh, original text, the Yeshiva Tana B'Shaya, Rod Zulmar, Kilo Manakulam Rak Mitzasa. Okay, so, we're talking about, in this little section here, learning by, learning by logic, learning uh, dinim through logic, which means if two cases are equal and one, the din is said first, then we should be able in logic to extend it to the second case. Okay. Now he's going to go to our exceptions here. Ulifamim gam ken hatana yomer techila hanose ha meyad chidish. Sometimes the Tana will tell you a subject that's a smaller Kiddush, like an Isa for a Kohen. But Achakach Yomer Hanosu Shiesh Bo Yoter Kiddush. 
and then we'll also tell you the east of Israel. This is the normal way, as opposed to the opposite way around, that the Tom does work. However, we will ask when we see that, when we see a, when the, the, the Tana is talking two cases where one really could be learned out of almost the other one, so the Gemara will ask. Why did you tell me the Yisra of the Kohen? Of course, you can't. I don't know the Yisra exists in the, the less Kiddush in Israel. And the Gemara will answer the Doche, the Yeshiva, Lozu, Apsu, Katana. The Mishnah here is talking in the form of Lozu, Apsu. Not only this is also like the Kohen case, but even. Israel case. Kolomar, lomi boy ze hanose shehu yoter kal, afilu ze shehu yoter chamor, v'yesh bo yoter chidish ye ze hadid. It's needless to say the one that is more mekel, let's say we'll have the Yisa, let me read that again. Okay, let's see. Again, he's saying here we're learning lozu abzu. Not only this case, but even the greater case. Kaloma, lomi boy Not only the one that is more. Kal ela filuzeshu yoter chamor v'yeshvo yoter chiddush yelo zedin. But even though the one that's more chamor and has a greater chiddush will have the din. That'll work with with a kula, for instance. If you have a kula with the Israel, and the same kula exists in the Kohen, uh, say would be mentioned both in the in the Mishnah, so you would say not only does the kula exist in the Israel, lozu afzu even in the Kohen. And he says that these are both going to be dochok. We never like to say this because normally we want to learn from Kalachoma. But let's finish his exposition. Sometimes it's not a low zoo op zoo, but it's a zoo, chain zoo, which is less frequent. Sometimes I'll tell you the greater chiddish, like the Easter of the uh, then we'll tell you afterwards the less Kiddush. That the Kohen is Asr, and then all of a sudden tell you Israel, which is a lesser Kiddush to be Asr. Uh, excuse me, just the opposite way around. Uh, if we don't have to be with the Mako. If the Kohen is Mako, so certainly the Israel will be Mako. Sometimes they'll tell you the least Kiddush first, and then the, 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 the you know, it was the Kiddush you'd most expect first, and then the lesser Kiddush. The Alderic Zu al the Zara. But this way is very, very uh, infrequently found. And of course, the Kasha Lab will always ask the Kasha, Ki Acha Shi Omer HaNose Shi Yesh Bo Yoteh Kiddush, you already tell me uh, the, the Nose with the big Kiddush, <coughs> Let's say a Kali exists with the Kohen. So Malo Loma Acher Shehumi Yud Kiddush. So then why do you have to tell me the Kali exists with the Yisrael? Yeshivulo Zuv Ab Zuv Ain Tzrich Loma Zuv Katani. You're right. Zuv Ain Tzrich Loma Zuv Katani. Really, this was the big Kiddush, and they didn't have to say the, the minor Kiddush. But he says the Elu Terutzim. <coughs> Excuse me. These two roots are the chukim, very dochek. Lo yitnu rak al tzad ha-hechrach, keshelo nimsa teretz acher, o tam yoter maspik. The only time we're going to use lo zu apsu zu for ain't zu chloma zu is when there's no way out. We just have no other way to show why both cases are are being brought. Some reason 
we just can't figure it out. So then we'll fall back on that. And normally, we don't want to uh, have any repetitions in the Mishnah, and that's our first uh, move is always to show why both cases are unneeded and and uh, that you really can't learn that. Like an Amish, no, lo hari zeka hari zeh. If you had one, you can't learn the other. To say lav dafko, we never want to say because really that's saying that the, the Mishnah is, uh, is is saying a case that we have to say. So he's saying both. Okay. He's saying both the loy zuavzu and the zubain tarklims are really dechukim, and really we don't have a good reason why the Tana brought down both cases. Um, so we're sort of like, okay, we don't have a choice. We don't know why, and, and, and we're stuck. Exactly. And, but it's only to be stuck. I mean, it's our last, last resort. We can't, exactly. Well, we can't find any other reason for it, so then we have to say, okay, lozu a supertani, which is loved off, and we don't want to say it, but sometimes we're forced to say it. Okay? Very good. Now, he says like this the next next. But like I'm saying, you see, these are all basic things that uh, when you're involved in learning, you, 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 you run into them and you sort of understand them. But to have them neatly arranged is a very, very important, uh, important tool. Now, Laolam kol no se halome bi chavaro, hayalafu lo bo ela b'mahalat milamdo v'lo yotka. Whenever you're learning, remember we're learning this whole this whole uh, section is about learning isvara from similar cases or kalvachoma. But he says when you do derive a din from one case and extend it to a second case because it's similar, you can't end up with a result that's greater than the source. You can't you can't say uh, kalvachoma, or well, certainly not mimics, you know that that. Uh, the result is going to be uh, uh, more strict in than, than the source. Why? He ain't really the Talmud Shia Yote Chomor Togadol Mirabo. It doesn't make sense that the Talmud should be greater than the than than the Rabbi. While Zen Emar Dio Lavo Benadin Rios Kamido. This is the concept of Dio. It's misspeak. It's, it's sufficient that. This law should be equivalent to the source that it came from, and not greater. Okay, here's the example. Okay, I spelled it out. He just says, but become a dialogue But let's look at that example. <clears throat> it's a uh, it's a mission in in on A. It says the following. It says, Shur Hamazik Rishus Hamiza Ketzad. When a Shur damages in the Rishus of the Niza. Now we're going to be talking here about Rishus of Rabin when a Shur damages, and when the Shur walks into someone else's property and does damage. So we want to know what's the din, the Shur. Uh, that's going to be Karen that we're going to be talking about. What's the din when he damages uh, inside the domain? of uh, the damager, not in the public area. Okay, so it says like this. Nagach, Nagaf, Neshach, Robots, and B8. If the shore now gored, pushed, bit, squatted on, or kicked, Nurishu Sarabin, Mishalam, Shetzinezik. If he did any of those Kavonal Hazik activities, in Rishusa Rabin, so he pays Hetzi Nesek. Now what happens if he does the same activities in the Rishusa Niza? He walks into someone's private area and he gores an animal there. Here we have a machlokis. Rav Tarfin Omer Nezik Shalem. Rav Tarfin to us says that he also has to pay Nezik Shalem in by goring, excuse me, that also. He pays Nezik Shalom, which is a Hiddish, in the private area. We thought that if he's a Tom, he always pays Chetzi Nezik. No, Rip Tarfin wants to say that I could show you that it's only Chetzi Nezik and Shusa Rabin, but in Shusa Yachid, he doesn't Nezik, he's going to have to pay Nezik Shalom. 
The Chachamim Omri, no. Chetzi Nezek, just like he paid <coughs> Chetzi Nezek and Rishul Sarabim, will pay Chetzi Nezek and Rishul Sarabim. So now, Reb Tarfin wants to bring a riot to his din, that you pay Nezek Shalom Rishul Sarabim. He says the following, Uma b'makam shahakel, ala shen, v'hala rego. Which makam is that? Rishul Sarabim. Rishul Patur. Look at the Rishul Sarabim. In Rishul Sarabim, shen and regal are patur. So you see that the Torah is Mako on Shane Varab, uh, Shane Varegel and Rishus Arabin. Okay, everybody walks around there and uh, what else are you gonna do? You have to live. You can't watch your animal twenty four hours a day, so it's on the Nizak to be beware in the Rishus uh Harabin when it comes to Shane and Regal. So in that in Rishus Arabin, the Torah is Mako on Shane Varegel that that you don't pay at all. Yet Yet, the hichme alehen shein regel b'shus hanizak. When it comes to the private area, all of a sudden you do have to pay. If your animal goes into another man's field or eats his crops, walks on it, eats the crops, you do have to pay. What? Nezik shalim. So in b'shus arabim, you're patul gamre for shein and regel. And b'shus hanizak, look at that. All of a sudden, you're paying nezik shalim. Makom shehichmer la keren, Rishu Sarab Neshalem Chetzi Nezek. Now, when it comes to keren in the Shus Arabin, Torah is very machmir. It doesn't have a patur for keren. Keren has to pay Chetzi Nezek in the Shus Arabin. Much more than the Shein and the Regal, they're patur. So certainly, Eno Din, Shenachmer Allah, Rishu Sad Nezek, Neshalem Nezek Shalem. So shouldn't it be Kalvachomer that the Karen in Rishus Hanizak should be Nezik Shola? It starts off as Chesi Nezik in Rishus Araba, in a place where the Shaden Regal is zero. So it already starts off Chesi. So we should at least have what the Shane and Regal has in Rishus Hanizak. They they go from zero to paying Nezik Shola. This is half damages to go to Nezik Shalom, he says. They should be equivalent. They said no. It seems that we're learning Rishus HaNizak from Rishus HaRabim and just like in Rishus HaRabim you pay Chetzi Nezek, so too in Rishusa Nizak you pay Chetzi Nezek, and you can't, through a Kalvachomer, extend the din more than the source. Okay, this is a very interesting Mishnah. There's a response to the Chachamim, there's a, there's a, there's a Chachamim come uh, back uh, to, against Rip Tarfin, Rip Tarfin answers, it's a very complex little Mishnah. But the principle is the principle that we shouldn't, if you're saying one case is derived from the other case, so that the, the case that is derived can never be greater than its source. That's the general rule. Okay. Omnam. Im acher shalomen hadid melamdo Okay, he says like this. It's true, the general rule is that we don't want to end up with a derivative case which is greater than its source. Okay, how can you, how can you produce a, a total greater than the op? However, there, and that's a, a general rule. Dialogue of the Vinci note, it's, it's, dialogue that you just derive the same din, how you can't say it should be greater. 
However, there is a slight variation, he says. Say you do derive case B from case A. Now, if case B has certain uh, peculiar strict, uh, in general, it has certain peculiar strict sniffing, little areas where it's strict. When this new DIN comes into case B, are we allowed to include the humras that case B have into this new DIN or not? This is a Some people say no. Any case you derive from a source has to be equal to the source. And other Chachamim say no. The, the, the DIN, once it's brought into the new uh, case, can have certain chumras that the new case generally has. Let's see how he spells that out. So that's what he means here. It's a lot of words, but I hope you got that. When we transfer from, from a given case to a derivative case, so the question is, if the derivative case has its own little chumras here and there, are we allowed to let, let that affect the din that we moved over? Okay, we're not making a new dialogue over the DIN means you cannot take uh, a, a source and create, like, go to Katsin Ezek, Tin Ezek Shalom through a Kalvachon. That you can't do. But what happens if normally the case that, you, that, that you're, you're bringing it into, the derivative case, is normally has certain sniffing that are normally Chumrah? Are you allowed that to, to affect what you just derived from? the source. Then that's the machlokas, he says. In the sniffing, also hadin yi'eh b'malas rabo u'bederek signo shalo v'lo yoter. Does it mean now, in all aspects, in all the little sniffing, little aspects, does this derivative case have to be uh, exactly like its source and not more? Oh, in b'derek signo sh'yesh l'tamid b'shad dinim, or it can the derech and, uh, and the manner that the, the derivative case, the Talmud case, has an other dinim, can it affect what you imported? Shabbat before spoke to Torah. Vezei yesh machlokas. Yesh mehen. Some kohamim say, ki ma'acher shezeh ha-din lamdu me'acher. Once you have a din that's learned from a source, the low bow mafurish bow bedin at smo the excuse me, the low bow mafurish bow bedin at smo the signon no the And the the source doesn't have these mafurish little sniffing. So then in everything you say dial uh dial the bow din. That's called don mine u mine. That means that whenever you're taking a derivative case from a source, then in every aspect the derivative case has to be equal to the source, even though normally this derivative asset may have certain little chumras here and there. However, Yeshua means somehow rabbis say, ki besnifei hadin this ube signon efshar lios bo maila chamura yotemi rabbo. Since the derivative case has normally some little chumras and other dinim, so there we can say that those chumras which we found are already in the derivative case can affect the important case. And it can have what's mafurish in the derivative case. These little chumras or sniff dinim uh, can affect the imported din. And that's called don mine, we derived it from a source, v'uke ba'asre, but we set it up in the context of the derivative case. V'alzeh omru, and I put it in the gray, but this is what he says, v'alzeh or don mine o mine, no, we have to, once we have an imported din, it has to be exactly equivalent to its source. And some people say, no, Don Mine, you're right, you imported it, but you can have the 
side glow or sniffing side dimming that exists in the uh, in, pull, in the in the derivative case can affect what was imported. That's called Vamine the Ubahasray. Okay, you could is a Baperic uh uh the shrewis uh eight is the Nafal Machlok is Ben Fachamim Bereb Shimin, Gabi Mikva, in the case of Mikva. The Omru Shnehem, Lo Lamdu, Elabit Me Sota. Both of them learned the case from Sota, Duk to Lishva. I believe that in next week I'll, I'll bring that down. I didn't have time to uh, go and import the whole case into the text. Umash Omru Dan Minei, Voki Basre, but he says there is a condition here. Even the one that says that you're allowed to have the derivative case affect what you've imported, it only is okay. You never say that the coolers that exist in the derivative case can affect the can affect the imported did. Only the chumras. Okay. That is um, now here I'm gonna need your help. Yeah. Okay. Of course, this is a piece that is. This is a piece that I'm not. Cool. Well, up to there, you more or less understand what's going on. Yeah. That, yeah. That's it. That's that's okay. That's okay that's yeah. That's classical stuff. Okay. Right. Now here right. you're gonna to have to help me out. Okay. Because I don't really uh, understand fully what he wants to say here. Okay, I'll try. Yes. Yeah. Okay. La Olam. Okay. Should we try this next week? It's getting a bit late. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. You know, next week, you know what I do? Be netter. I'll bring the Domi name in a case in. Right. And I'll also do some more research over here. This is a place that's always got me a little. Uh, okay, power exciting. Okay. So okay. we'll stop here. That's a good, good, uh, good place to stop.